Hello, I'm David D. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists around the world who are working outside the mainstream for decades and who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so you want to make sure you click below on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you'll be alerted when the next video drops. Of course, I can't resist a great title because I look at them daily and when I find one, oh, this is so much fun. In fact, you better stay tuned because at the end I will list why, as a critical thinker, this whole thing is on a house of cards. I will list that stuff at the end. So you got to wait. No, I'm not going to take 27 minutes and do this. Hopefully I'll do these in minutes instead of many minutes. Um, could the universe missing antimatter be found in black holes? Oh, come on. You guys know me. <laughs> this is this is just too easy. Um, and of course, we have the artist's conception, which I like, of Kepler-42. Why do they do this? Because they make these beautiful pictures. And of course, science is advancing. We don't, we no longer just show the, our solar system. We have, we know what's going on in all the other solar systems. So we got Kepler-42. And so they show this so that all these ideas that they put out there and these crazy ideas are out there will make, you may think, well, they're advancing science, so they must be advancing. So this must be true. This is all part of the game and it says an artist model conception of that we have every reason to believe that all it's all made of matter and not antimatter that this kepler 42 and uh, believe that's matter but black holes may tell a different story as we have no way of knowing what they're made out of do i even have to say anything about this if you don't know what they're made out of how come there's antimatter inside. <sighs> I'm here to show you how critical thinkers think. I wish my mom, bless her soul, was around. She would have just, she would have gone, <laughs> let's think where I got my fervor from. One of the greatest puzzles in the, uni in the entire universe is why there's so much matter and not an more matter than antimatter. The laws of physics, uh, physics, as far as we can tell, the laws of physics, we're always being told laws, only allow us to create and destroy matter and antimatter in equal amounts. I don't know, do, do people, do the physicists like, are they sitting somewhere and like the, um, one of the, I don't know, Einstein comes from his grave and comes down with the tablets saying, antimatter and matter must be made in equal amounts. I, I can't take it. Okay, let's keep going. And here's here's a quote from the person who was talking about this, um, whatever scientist. It's a mystery why we see matter without corresponding antimatter. Some remote and old supermassive black holes evolve much faster than current theory is able to predict. I mean, there's just so much problem with that in the first place. You know, supermassive black holes evolve. So they, they don't know what's inside of them, but they evolve. <laughs> Okay, could the, ma the missing mass or ma antimatter be hiding inside those primordial black holes? Does the total mass of the supermacula even even come close? Come even close to the amount of anti missing antimatter? I mean, how many assumptions are here that there's missing antimatter? Who, who says? Well, that even comes close to? I, I, they don't know amounts. They don't know. Ah, uh, I can't take it. Let's go on. It says, every time we create a quark, we also create an anti-quark. What if quarks don't exist? Oh, I forgot to put that in my list at the end. Oh, I told you something. <laughs> every time a quark is, destro uh, is destroyed, an anti-quark is also destroyed. Are you buying any of this? Every time we create or destroy a lepton, we also create or destroy an anti-lepton uh, from the same lepton family. <laughs> Every time a quark or lepton experiences interaction, collision, or decay, the total net of the quarks and lepton at the end of the reaction blah, 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 are the same as in the end of the combustion. This is sort of the conser conservation of idiocy. I'm, oh, I said it. I said it. No, this is the conservation of, I don't know, matter, antimatter. Again, their assumptions are just beyond me. Um, the standard interpretation of all of, of these facts is that even though we aren't entirely sure how, we must have created more matter and antimatter in the universe in the in the universe past. 
again, how many, I mean, when they build a house of cards, you know, 14 stories tall in, in a matter of a half a phrase, a half a sentence. It's, it's truly amazing. That's part really truly amazes me. In the standard picture, uh, the hot Big Bang, when the universe was in its early stage, stages, particles and antiparticles uh, of all known, pairs of all known, and even yet to be discovered by particles. Yeah, Nobel Prizes. You know, my, uh, my uh, right over here, my uh, grad student, he's got to get his stuff. So we, I, I got my particle. You, you have your particle? You don't have a particle named after you. Make one up. Come to our school and you can make one up and you can. Neutrinos are good because there's so many of them. Um, it says particles are creating tremendous abundance. This is because at high temperatures and density, you can spontaneously produce a new ant particle, antiparticles from pure energy. Energy is a concept. There's no such thing as pure energy, folks. What is it? Um, blah, 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 in equal amounts, these, uh, these pairs annihilate, producing pure energy photons again. As the universe cools, you run out of energy to make new pairs, and annihilation dominates. So I guess this is their explanation why there's not so much antimatter. All we have really now is annihilation going on because of the Big Bang. But what about this new idea? <laughs> I got one. Um, antimatter and matter are being sucked up by the internet. The Russians are hacking antimatter. There you go. I know that's full political. Uh, don't worry, I don't get into that. What if at some early point something compelled the anti matter to, co to collapse into black holes? Look, this is really physics. I, I got it now. Physics, are, physics is the Hollywood for science. Theoretical physics. It's a story. We've got to have action. We have to have we have to have conflict. We have to have heroes. We have to have anti-heroes. Matter, anti-matter. You know, something that compels. I mean, not just happened, but it's got to compel. It. I mean, you've got to get. It's got. We got to go through a storyline, through that storyline, so we can get to the part in the script where that that anti-matter is compelled. It just doesn't go there. You know, maybe it's it's undecided, but we've got to develop those. I'm going to keep going. I have only a few more slides left, so don't worry. Um, so, um, but we have another way of knowing that the laws of physics have symmetries between the way matter and antimatter are allowed to behave. Allowed. You see that? Allowed. Let me, um, where is it? I know I have my manual around here somewhere that tells me the laws of the universe, uh, and this must be one of them. Um, it's a law. It was brought down on on tablets from somewhere. We don't need exotic physics to make the supermassive black holes in the early universe. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. In fact, I would argue so much against that, that our physics is so exotic that if really intelligent beings came to us, they're going to just laugh their heads off. Um, you, you mean, Mr. Extraterrestrial E.T., you didn't find upness? That wasn't, that's not in the the laws of the universe. Upness, how about a half a spin? Quarter spin. Primordial black holes are ill motivated and largely ruled out as existing in engraved abundance. I got it. I told you I have hacked what this is. There's somebody... There's some really rich person, just like that they're controlling all wars and all that stuff, which that's kind of true. The rich people like war because it makes money. But this, there's some guy out there who's controlling this because he's making this narrative. It is a script. That's it. I have hacked it. The antimatter is forbidden, see, forbidden from having interactions that would cause it to make black holes while having the matter not make black holes. Now you ask me why we have so many people who don't believe in this and why this channel is growing. We're almost to 500 and believe me, hey, I got something coming for 500 and the end is here, almost.
The early universe was filled with ma matter and antimatter. It's the sea of radiation. But with all the, uh, uh, but with it all annihilated away after cooling, a tiny bit of matter was left over. <laughs> because of our sense of dark matter, is that what it is? However, how exactly this happens is known as bario bariogenesis problems. It's known as bariogenesis problems, and it remains one of the great unsolved problems of physics. But believe me, solve it, and you got a Nobel Prize, even if it's baloney. Okay, the end. Here we go. What's wrong for critical thinkers? Well, the Big Bang's wrong. So all this stuff about primordial and how far back and all that stuff, I mean, you can just throw, what, half of this article away. I mean, so you're reading about, like, oh, I'm going to care about what they think about the Big Bang and that the, uh, it had this and the... It, uh, the, the universe is always around, folks. You know, even I'm not a religious person. The universe, if you want to call it, is God. It's there forever. It never goes away. Anyways, black holes are in reality very dense objects with no magical time or event horizons or any of that stuff or sucking up antimatter, no. Uh, and if you have a model of the universe and you know everything has a, has a physicality, and you make a model for that, we shouldn't have to guess what are black holes. We should be able to tell that, for instance, in our model, uh, dense objects are basically the nucleons with very little electrons, or in our case, G1 particles. It's the middle and the heavy part of the atoms all together. And they probably have, you know, how, how much they can stay together and how much they can't and all that stuff. Antimatter and, and matter problems don't exist because the universe doesn't have problems. The universe doesn't have an antimatter problems. It just is. The problem comes from our theories. And a lot of times that means we have to, as we say, the problem with the theory means the theory needs to change. Sometimes wholesale. That's what we critical thinkers thought. Think. Always think. And like I said, don't take my word for it. Don't take what anyone says on faith. You want to stay critical. You want to stay thinking. I am David D. Hilscher. I am your science therapist. Ciao for now.